morning. I want to welcome the public that's here, the membership. This is the open session town hall of the ANA board. For those of you that may not know, I'm Walt Officer Mackey, the current president for 152 and a half more days. <laughs> so I would like you to sit back. You'll have ample time for questions and answers. I will give a couple of recaps of what we did in the executive session on some of the issues that I can. Mr. Secretary, would you call the roll, please? Uh, President Astromecki. Present. Uh, Vice President Garrett. You'll be late. Okay. Governor Atkins. Present. Uh, Governor Lyons. Here. Uh, Governor Mulvaney. Here. Uh, Governor Ross. Here. Governor uh, Rottingham. Yes. Uh, Governor uh, Burke. Absent. Okay. And Governor Swinney. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. That's great. We have seven. Quorum of seven. Okay. We can conduct business. Thank you. Board members, thank you for as well. First, I want to begin with a little good news for us. Don't know whether any of you had the opportunity to listen to NPR radio. The ANA was on it all day yesterday, talking about not only this convention, but what the ANA is and is all about. It's a great new market opportunity. I know Kim and I are ecstatic to be able to break into this new area. And it has brought a number of people into the show yesterday. <clears throat> I'm hoping even for greater results today because NPR said they would run it again some spots today, Family Free Day. So this is just exciting news for all of you as members to know as well. On the agenda, I have a special presentation, but before we get to that, I would like to have our numismatic educator, Rod Gillis, give us just a quick couple of three bullet points on updating where we are with our educational mission and mandate. Rod, would you please be so? Three minutes, Mr. Brown, uh, Yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, I have some uh, a listing of some accomplishments and, and goals from the Education Department over the, the past six months that I just wanted to inform the board of. Um, our, our free money bus program. Um, for those of you who are not aware, our Money Bus program is a, uh, is a program in which we're able to give uh, youngsters in the surrounding area in Colorado Springs the opportunity to visit our museum. Money is tight within many school districts. So we're able to purchase one bus um, per school so that they can come and visit us. And, and in 2014, we had 11 schools use the program and with 693 students attending the museum. Uh, this school year so far, and we're in the middle of the school year, we've had seven schools use the program, bringing 317 students with five more uh, money bus tours scheduled, so we'll be over last year. Uh, April and May tend to be the busiest time of year for field trips, so we should easily surpass last year's numbers. So that's really good news. Uh, our Kid Zone. Uh, the Kids Zone, which is in the museum, has been very successful. Numismatic instructor Sam Gelbert has worked diligently to provide quality lessons for attending children every third Saturday of the month. Lessons have included topics on how coins are made, searching change by looking through bankrolls of cents, as well as writing activities on the story of a coin from the coin's perspective. He's also sponsored a creative writing contest this past November involving the above mentioned activity in which 18 youngsters participated. Uh, attendance at the fun show this year, um, we had a real presence at the fun show, which I'm, I'm very glad to report. <clears throat> um, the, uh, we had approximately 200 youngsters participate in our treasure trivia program at the fun show, and we were also able to conduct a fundamental, fundamentals of grading course, which was sold out and very successful. Uh, the department has worked to include quizzes and activities for the ANA website. The education committee is currently working on activities specifically suited for member clubs. So that's exciting. We're almost finished updating grading coins today of the diploma program. The goal is to have the course replicate the very successful live fundamentals of grading course taught at conventions and summer seminar as closely as possible. Um, our numismatic periodic table poster is almost completed. The poster 
feature will be available for sale beginning at summer seminar. And that's something that no one else will have, so I'm very excited about that. Um, coins for A's. There are currently 814 youngsters involved in Coins for A's. Education assistant Debbie Wilkerson has worked diligently contacting, contacting major school districts all across the country. Coins for A's has also been publicized in Coin World and most recently on the Consumer Reports website, which is very exciting news. Uh, the ANA's relationship with our local school district, District 11, has blossomed. I was involved in an awards presentation for a district contest in which we were able to speak directly to the school board. District 11 now holds their social studies department chairperson meetings at our museum. The meetings reinforce the many ways in which the museum exhibits work closely with the district's curriculum. The ANA's first college scholarship will be awarded to a current high school senior ANA member this spring. And I want to publicly thank Brian Fanton and Governor Ostromecki for their contributions in, in getting that forward. And uh, on a personal note, and finally, I wish to thank the board for their support <coughs> of the World War I um, Veteran Centennial Commemorative Coin. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm a little emotional. Commemorative Coin legislation. <coughs> On December 16th, President Obama signed the legislation into law. Uh, this coin will honor the veterans of the war to end all wars and will be minted in 2018. And I just wanted to thank the board for their participation. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. And um, uh, hopefully when the coin is minted <clears throat> in 2018, um, it'll be a legacy for the ANA. So I'm very proud and, and you should be very proud of your contributions in helping with that. I know you received a direct request or a demand from the president to be here this morning. I wanted you to share with the public and the press and those viewing us live podcast through our membership. Stand, please. <laughs> house, yeah, it's true. This is part of 
This is part of what we reaching to fruition. This is part of what we do. But also, but also, I have heard people say that the ANA um, is not relevant anymore. And I've heard to say that I've heard people say that the ANA is not worthy of their membership. And I've even heard people say that the ANA is broken. And I say to those people, you are wrong. Thank you. Thank you very much for this too. We would normally do it at the end, but I want to get him back out on the floor to help with our educational activities. Rod, thank you for the report and congratulations. Some easy jobs are not easy, are they? <laughs> Resolution, did John Wilson leave? Oh, it will be. John. <laughs> just, just John. <laughs> he left, okay, well. Back in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. So we'll, we, we'll be the resolutions into it later. First order of business for us is to take care of some house cleaning or housekeeping issues, dealing with minutes. In a motion by, second by, to approve the open session meeting, teleconference meeting minutes as revised R1, October 14, 2014. Mover, maker to the motion. So moved. Vice President Garrett, second. Anybody else awake? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gary. Governor Atkins. Any discussion? Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried 801. Next, motion 1B. Motion by, <coughs> second by, to approve the open session teleconference meeting, meeting minutes of October 30th, 2014. Moved by? So moved. Governor, Governor Atkins. Second. <laughs> Governor Swindling. Any questions? Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? Motion carried, 801. Okay, this is what you've been waiting for, our financial report. And I'm going to call upon our treasurer, Jerome Walton. Financial report, investment report as well. Just give a quick update if you would be so kind. Our financial outlook. It's on. Our financial outlook uh, is looking <coughs> up uh, from last year uh, from several aspects. Oakmark Investments. We had a stock split and dividends amounting to $526,585. We have had an increase in the Ben E. Keith uh, investments in the amount of $1,165,495. And the other part of the Ben E. Keith investments are up by $1,219.91. And our numismatic collections uh, have gone up by $1,809,575. So that's looking pretty good. Questions from the board? Well, we are looking good. Keep it up. Great reports like that are always good and positive. Governor Lyon, audit committee report, please. So I, <clears throat> my voice is kind of going, but I don't feel like um, So I believe everybody has a copy of the uh, draft financial <coughs> statements, which were put out by our auditor. Um, the, as Jerome mentioned, uh, the, the ANA's financial health is quite good right now. We had an overall increase in total assets of uh, just over $2.7 million this year. 
Um, one of the things that uh, I, I've been kind of trying to c communicate to the board as well to the membership is we have to realize that as a nonprofit organization, we do not necessarily have the same um, budgeting guidelines as a as a business would. Um, we're very fortunate to have in excess of forty million dollars of investments, um, actually, which will will grow um, over time. Is uh, there's a portion of the Benny Keith stock that we'll be receiving at a future date that's discounted uh, based on when we'll receive it, and that's on the books for about thirteen and a half million. But uh, when we receive it, we'll actually be in the neighborhood of twenty five million. Um, so, provided that we are conscientious in our spending, um, it is prudent, in my opinion. Um, to use a portion of our earnings from our investments for program services. Um, we've had many discussions about that as a board. And, uh, you know, I, I think the uh, financial reports from this year show that that is wise. Um, even though we, we did spend uh, several hundred thousand dollars in proceeds from our investment, you can still see that our total assets grew by well over $2 million for the year. So uh, we're in a good position, and uh, I feel confident the board will um, make the right decisions going forward to ensure that we stay that way. Board comments or questions? <clears throat> motion 3A, I have a motion by Governor Lyon, second by Governor Roddinghouse to accept the fiscal year and 1031-2014 audited financial report prepared by Biggs Kirkwood. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? <clears throat> Abstentions? Motion carried, 801. The second part of the motion for the 990, it was just completed yesterday. So we have tabled that. We will take that up in our business, but everything looks good. The board has not reviewed it yet. So we will be taking that up at our April 15th meeting, teleconference meeting. Okay, item number four, 2016, <clears throat> Dallas. National Money Show, host chair and club. Our convention director, I almost forgot Rhonda's name. <laughs> it's, it's Saturday, it's, it's un yeah, understandable. It's been a long day, Rhonda Surik. That's fine, Ed. <laughs> Thank you very much. As long as you don't call me Clifford. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to put a motion forward to the board that Jim Fitzgerald be named the host chair for the 2016 National Money Show to be held in Dallas uh, at this time next year. Any comments, any questions for, for the board? Does he promise good weather next year? <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that kind of Not pressure on me, more. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move that, Walter. Okay, a motion by Governor Ridinghouse. I'll second that. Second by, was it Governor Russ? Thank you. To, for Jim Fitzgerald to be named the host chair for the 2016 National Money Show in Dallas, Texas. Any additional discussion? Yes, he does. <laughs> this has been put if forth not, by the club. All those in favor? <laughs> aye. Aye, aye. All those opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Motion carried 801. Okay. You move right along. We want to give you time okay. in the audience to do it. Motion 4B. I would like to propose that the Texas Numismatic Association and the Dallas Coin Club be named co-host clubs for the 2016 National Money Show in Bami, Dallas, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Board, is there a motion to do so? So moved. So moved by Governor Atkins, second by? Ross. Governor Ross. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried, 801. Rhonda, you can stand up again. Number five, Cyclone. <coughs> now here we're gonna make a couple of adjustments which will make it easier. We have tabled motion one and two, pending further investigation for time changes for those two conventions. So Rhonda's only going to be addressing the uh, motion five was A, but motion three part of that as well for the National Money Show in 2020. We did go out and look at approximately 20 cities. We had three cities, four locations respond with um, dates available for us. Based on the letter I did receive from the GNNA, 
and the MCCA requesting that we return in 2018, which is not possible because Georgia is not available. I'd like to propose that Atlanta, Georgia at the Cobb Galleria Center be proposed for the 2020 National Money Show with the support coming from the GNA and the MCCA. And I have a motion by Vice President Garrett, a second by Governor Mulvaney to select Atlanta Cobb Galleria as the host city for the 2020 National Money Show and in it, enter into the necessary contracts with the convention center and hotel. Any further board questions or discussion? If not, call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried, 8-0-1. Also on the World's Fair of Money, we had a couple of tabled issues as well, but they will come on later. So for the first one up, would be dealing with the site for the oops, 2019. The ANA, the ANA has been requested by the Chicago Coin Club to return to 20, the 2019 World's Fair of Money to Rosemont, Illinois, based on the fact it is their 100th anniversary of the club. They have been a solid strong presence for us for the last four out of five years. Therefore, I am recommending that Chicago slash Rosemont be considered by the board for the 2019 World's Fair of Money with support coming from the Chicago Coin Club once again. I have a motion by Governor Atkins, second by Governor Sperber, to accept the proposal of the Chicago Coin Club to host the convention and, and select Ro <coughs> Chicago Rosemont as the host city for 2019 World's Fair of Money and enter into the necessary contracts. As, yeah, as Governor Sperber is not here, I will need a second to proceed with this motion from someone. I'll second it. Okay. Second. Vice President Garrett replacing Governor Sperber, who will join us a little bit later. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried, 801. For 2020, I would like to table this motion until the August World's Fair of Money. We are currently working diligently with Washington, D.C. and Destination, D.C., along with uh, help from IDCA and Kathy McFadden to uh, repeal the tax that is currently stands for collector coin bullion and collector bullion in the D.C. area as uh, levied by their city council. So at this point, I'd like to ask the board to table 2020 until the uh, World's Fair of Money in Chicago. Motions are tabled. We will move on then next to Vice President Garrett. This will be discussion item with audience involvement as well. And number <coughs> six, membership expansion campaign. Vice President Garrett. Um, yeah, I wanted to put this on the... Uh, Agenda. Oh, did I miss 20? I thought it was both. I'm sorry. I tabled 2020 for the DC. Okay. I think it was both. I want to get out of here. <laughs> no problem. At I'm this, sorry, Rhonda. At this point, due to lack, uh, the selection being very limited, we'd mm -hmm. like to table 2021 until the August uh, World's Fair of Money as well. So tabled. Thank you. Thank you. You ready now? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> After I get done firing, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> um, yeah, I asked to have this added to the agenda because I wanted to basically to start the, the uh, discussion of um, examining the marketing of the ANA. Uh, we all know it's a great organization. We saw good examples of that uh, this morning, for instance. But I'm not sure we get the message out properly. And we, uh, up until now, we've really not had uh, expertise on the staff for marketing. Kim says there's someone coming on fairly soon <coughs> on a part-time basis who uh, has a lot of expertise in marketing, but uh, which we're going to be working. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to work with her and, and uh, see what we can come up with. But in addition to that, I'd like to also bring in people uh, in our industry. Um, there's, a, there's some amazingly brilliant people in, in marketing in our industry, but they're not necessarily working for the ANA to, to do anything to expand the ANA. They they're mostly want to expand their own companies. You know, Heritage is probably an extreme example. They have 800,000 people, I think, on their, their mailing list database, and we've got 25,000. So there's uh, clearly some things we can, we can learn from that. Uh, one other company I know uh, did a marketing campaign selling Silver Eagles in January. Um, 
they did a national campaign selling them for $18.95, and they sold 600,000 coins in January, and it was 40, 40 coins per person limit. So there's a, uh, you know, it, it was very successful. So, you know, the, the bottom line is, is the a and A I I think in the past has not really had um, really deep marketing experience either on our staff or bringing in from the outside. And I want to try to work on that and form a marketing committee with the permission of, the, of this, uh, this board to bring in people uh, to gather uh, expertise out, out, uh, outside the organization, plus also to work with the staff and the board and anybody uh, else in the, uh, who thinks they can bring something to the table. So this is just really, this is probably a, a long-term project, but um, it's, there's a lot of things we need to do to expand our membership. We, we talked about it a lot in the, in the forum yesterday and you know, bringing up the, you know, I think it's, I think almost every candidate agreed membership uh, numbers are, are probably one of the biggest things we have an issue with. And really, not just the, um, our membership, it's really the whole, uh, in my opinion, the whole numismatic community in general are facing aging demographic issues that I think it, we would all benefit from uh, bringing more people uh, to the table who, who would be interested in their coins. <coughs> so um, that was just, uh, just kind of what I just wanted everybody to know that's kind of what we're going to start. And uh, if anybody has any questions about that or what, what we're trying to do, or if anybody wants to be involved in it, you know, uh, let us know. But, I think it was a lot of this was covered yesterday in the forum, and I think most people here were were there. But um, if uh, anybody wants to expand on or or, or uh, have questions or uh, input, you know, now's a good time to do it. Any you member, you know, sir, would you step up in the microphone, please? No, we got. I'm sorry. I'm going to let you field the questions. I'm going to okay. just facilitate. Okay. 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 We'll get Nancy after that. Three minutes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Harold Katzman. I am the Vice President of the New California State Numismatic Association and Corresponding Secretary for the Numismatic Association of Southern California. So when it comes to membership, I am fully familiar with the issues with membership as the Corresponding Secretary. So last November, I went to NAC at our last board meeting with a bold idea of doing something different, and I'm passing out to the board members here. I don't have enough for everyone. But if those who, uh, Walt, I know you've had it, you know about it, you can pass yours on. What we decided to do, and I got the board to do it, was to do from November through the end of January sort of a holiday special where we offered a $10 NAAC membership versus the normal $25 membership. And it was only publicized. We have no time to publicize it through our publication because we didn't have time for it. By the time it got out, the 31st would have passed. So it was all done three ways. I send out an email to all the clubs, as well as a mailing to all the clubs about what we were doing. All the members who were in attendance had copies of applications I sent out to all of them. So we did it by word of mouth. In that two and a half month period, we added approximately 40 new members at the $10 rate. Mind you, we lost about $6 per person based on how much it cost just to mail out our quarterly publication. My goal now as the secretary is to make sure we find a way to retain those members, which is the second part of it, and I got a few tricks up my sleeve as an incentive for the second go around. My thought to this board, why can't you do something like that? An incentive to get someone the first time in there. And I think one of the best ways you might do it would be right here at your conventions. You offer $6 for non-members to come to this meeting, as you do the same thing in your big one. Why can't we offer a free membership if they sign up right then and there, but do it at a reduced rate, maybe $15? Get them in here. You have how many thousand people coming to both conventions? Why not sign them up right then and there? They get $15, they get free admission, and then it's up to you and all the membership <clears throat> to how to retain them. I think you need to take a, dis a real strong step and try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, we try something else. And maybe you can implement something for your meeting coming up in Chicago. It worked for us. We decided as NASC to continue it for the entire year. And I'll soon be getting out a press release to the media as well as to the numismatists. This is what we're trying to do. If it works, who wins? We win and you win. And as for those sample applications I gave to all the board members there, please feel free to fill them out and give me your $10. And I welcome you to NASC. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Nancy input. Wilson, I think you were up next. Three minutes. Can I, 
Can I just ask what lane of Please announce yourself and then. Okay, my name is Nancy Wilson. I'm from Ocala, Florida. I've served on this board for eight years. And when I was on the board, they talk about getting members. Well, John and I, you know, are out there pushing, pushing, and pushing. Coin collecting, sorry to say, is not the hobby it was years ago. Now it's money, money, money. The more a person can make on selling a coin, the better they like it. And of course, with children, <coughs> they don't have the money unless their parents give it to them. By having a marketing committee, I think that's great. However, if you're gonna hire an outside firm, when I was on the board, that happened. I voted against it. It cost the ANA at that time, I don't remember what year it was, $100,000. Did they get members for one year, and that was it. They didn't continue. So why spend 100000 and not get members? I was gonna talk uh, yesterday at the forum. I wasn't called upon, unfortunately. But everybody should be carrying a membership, especially the ones on the board. All the members should be carrying it. When you see somebody, try and get them to join. This man here mentioned that if you give them a discount, well, if they come to this show, they are getting a discount. They pay $6 to get in. No matter where you go, you have to pay um, admission fee if you go to a show. But then if they join, if somebody pushes it, like John and I do, but we're way in the back of the room, by that time, we don't even get to see the people. They don't come back that far. They only have to pay an additional $12. He was saying, I don't know what amount you said, but they only have to pay 12. That's cheap to be a member of the ANA for one year. Yesterday we had two people, a husband and a wife come up and they wanted to join for two years. They weren't gonna join. They didn't catch them out front because they're busy. They can't do that. But we need more ANA people on that floor and maybe different sections to try and get them to join. Not for one year, but for at least two years. One year costs the ANA a lot of money to get them uh, into the system. But I feel all the ANA members, especially the board, should be pushing memberships and carrying a membership application with them. Thank you. I'd like to respond to it a little bit. Um, you know, I totally agree about everybody doing it on the grassroots level. Um, in my Lexington Coin Club in Kentucky, I, I give free membership to anybody in our coin club who wants to join for the first time. So, you know, we've gotten quite a few members over the years, and some of them have been, you know, summer seminars, and it, it does work once you get them engaged. Um, I completely agree with that, and I think it's good to everyone to try to get as many members as, as you can individually. That, that being said, um, I have concerns for an organization the size of the ANA that won't get the job done as far as what we want to be into the future. So I don't want to, I don't want to waste $100,000. That's the last thing I want to do. Um, I think what we're the, uh, when I was talking to Kim, this, uh, she's coming on a part-time basis, right? So we're not, we're not hiring a full-time employee. I believe it's a, like a part-time consulting basis. And um, I've, been in, I've been in Rare Coins for a long time, and I do some marketing myself. And marketing, to do it wisely, is, is more like a test marketing thing. You spend a few thousand dollars, you try something, like the other gentleman said here, if it doesn't work, you try something else. You know, the last thing I want to do is write a $100,000 check and end up with uh, a 1,000 members that don't, re don't uh, renew. So that's a, that's a waste of our money. But I, I think that our organization cannot uh, rely on a grassroots level because I, don't, I think in the long term, the attrition will catch, will, over, will uh, uh, override that. I, don't, I think our, you know, we're going we're gonna to lose more people naturally than we will be able to sign up ourselves. So I don't want to waste money, but I do th still want to explore working with people who, who, who have expertise in marketing that do things that work. Because there are things that work out there. I mean, you can get new people. And, and then that being said, um, the, this board also needs to do a really deep examination about, you know, we're selling a product ultimately for $28. You know, a lot of people just don't see value in it. And we need to, like, make it like the best bargain in numismatics, you know, bar none. And uh, that, I don't think that's been maybe addressed. So, you know, it's great to sign up membership to be, you know, fun to be a member of the ANA. Ultimately, though, for the people that don't understand all this, they need to see value in the membership, and we need to do it on that end as well. Rich. I guess you call it. You yeah, I'll, I'm sure we'll let you respond because this okay, is your yeah. discussion. 
three minutes. Good morning. I am Richard Josefiak, and today I'm here as a Georgia News Medic Association governor and the advertising manager for the GNA. I want to thank the board for approving Atlanta for the 2020 convention. GNA and Mecca are looking forward for you to come out again like you did two years ago. There's a very large population in the Atlanta area within 100 miles, and the show two years ago drew a lot of people. Next month, the ANA Roadshow is coming out to the GNA 51st show. As of yesterday, we have a complete sell of sold out boards of about 350 tables, and we have a waiting list of dealers wanting to come. I've already been contacted by the Chattanooga newspapers and the Delta newspapers and through Atlanta um, asking for information and planning to send reporters to the show because of the ANA Roadshow, and we're also doing appraisals. Part of our education is to pay for the Roadshow to come out. When the Roadshow came out two years ago, we had a spike of 25% in attendees. I met the uh, membership table with some of the staff. We uh, sold memberships. We also gave away memberships. Mecca provides free YN uh, <coughs> memberships. GNA does provide some of our scholarships for YNs and adults. And from sitting at the table for a number of years, people look upon the ANA membership as being able to see people from the ANA, see the museum exhibits, and interacting with us. And they consider that to be a great value. <coughs> And I've received that many times by actually seeing somebody either once or twice a year. It adds a new dimension to the membership versus just getting the numismatist. So being out there in the field makes a very big difference. And we're willing to spend the money to bring the a and &E out to Georgia to have that experience. And this year, Rod's coming out at Tiffany. Oh, Rod's already gone. So we're looking forward to that. Thank you. May I ask that the audience confine its thoughts to suggestions, the board, and I think Vice President Garrett's looking for ideas, you know, to help us I would enhance our, yeah, I, I, I'm putting you on the spot. Okay. You know, you know, the Roadshow is good because it, it, it you know, the ANA is a brand, and that gets the brand out to more people, and, you know, the museum showcase is very educational, and, uh, I'm, you know, I'm strongly for that, but it's also, you know, the coin shows in general all have a struggle on their hands. <coughs> And I think anything they, they can do to make uh, regional coin shows more successful is a good thing. Kurt, Bellman. Three minutes, sir. I won't use anywhere near that long. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm a, a member of the Red Rose Coin Club of Lancaster and the Daniel Boone of Reading, Pennsylvania, and recently have become a member of Chicago Coin Club. I'm going to be visiting them on my way back east. Um, but uh, one suggestion that I would have, we have, we have a, a large organization called the Central Pennsylvania Numismatics Association. I've never been to a CPNA show that didn't have an open table due to an unsold table or a no-show dealer at our local, at our local uh, shows. I believe the ANA should suggest to its member clubs that they consider having an ANA membership table fill any em empty table that they might have left over at their local shows. I originally joined the ANA at, a, at an ANA membership table at a local show in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Good idea. You want to see it? Here, here, here. Hey, you guys are you mind if I take yeah, a, a minute to? I just focusing on Garrett. Forgive me, Governor. So I, I just wanted to, uh, to, to thank all of you for, for uh, giving those suggestions. I do think that we also have some underutilized uh, things that we do already. For example, the, the district representative program uh, is one that goes to local shows and has those membership tables. I, I really think that's something that's, that's underutilized. There's show kits that are available for anybody who requests them. Uh, they can bring those to their local shows. We also, as Rod mentioned earlier, have several YN programs that help uh, obtain and retain uh, YN members. So we've got coins for A's, we've got the, the free scout memberships for anybody who completes the scout merit badge. So, and, th and that's for boys and girl scouts. So please, uh, I agree with John and Nancy, have, have memberships with you. I've got a backpack full of them right behind me actually. And uh, you know, we, we have shown to, to gain and retain members through all three of these things that I've just mentioned. And they're, they're just underutilized by the membership. I, I challenge each and every one of you to 
become district representatives. Go to your local clubs. Go to your regional clubs who have mm -hmm. outreach to, to larger groups of people and, and use those, those resources that are currently available. I, I think it'll only serve to, uh, to help with all those things with, uh, with Jeff's uh, motion here for expanding the memberships. I, I really agree that uh, this is something we need and we should, uh, we should utilize what we've got already and then build upon it. But we also need more beyond that too. Exactly. We have a long range yep. target program here. I can attest to that I was recently at two shows in El Paso for one in Albuquerque the following weekend. The fact that you have an ANA member or somebody out there, and I talked with it with our vice president, someone that's approachable they could talk to. In the three days that I was at El Paso, John, believe it or not, I beat your record. I signed up 19. I signed up eight the following weekend in Albuquerque. And that's because, like Chet Krause put it, the best way you know, to do this area is the one-on-one. -on -one. And we need a lot more of that from our volunteers, <coughs> our members, everyone. And it was John Wilson that kept stuffing my coat with memberships in Honolulu, remember? So that when I walked around the floor, everybody had one, and we did fairly well there. To and handle, but it's that personal approach. But there's more beyond that. We're doing these things, sir. Stick to the topic. Three minutes. Uh, my name is Oded Paz. Uh, Jeff, first of all, I uh, applaud your uh, motion or, or this idea of having marketing. I, I think it's a wonderful and great idea. Um, I like. I mean, I've been in sales and marketing most of my adult life. I like to connect the reward to the marketing company as to the produce that they produce, which means if we take the past one, two, three, four, five years, have an average of how many new members sign in, I would like them to be rewarded if they can raise that number, and then a second year if we retain those. Retain, you know, we, we do have a, a, a member retainment committee, which I haven't heard from in, in a few years. I was on that committee. Uh, but, you know, it's much more, well, it's not much more important, but it is important to retain the members for the second year going on uh, 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 than it is to, to actually get them. Uh, since I have sales and marketing <coughs> experience, uh, whether I do get elected to the next board or not, I would like to partake in that, in that committee. I think I have some pretty good ideas. Uh, another thing that today clubs have to request show kits to be sent to them. Nevertheless, the numismatist has a list of all the shows, and then there's other magazines who have lists of shows. I would like to see the ANA being proactive, approaching these shows and say, hey, do you know that we have these kits? Do you have somebody who would be willing to have an ANA table or a corner and man it and give it? A again, I'm looking for more proactive from the ANA side rather than the show or the d district representative asking for these kits on their own. Thank you. Thank you. That's very good. Yeah, I th I'm sorry, look, Gary. No, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. I well, I, yeah, I, like, you know, respond to that. I, you know, reten he brought up a very important <coughs> issue, which is retention. You know, we can give away memberships and get a lot of members, but do they actually, the next year, do they want to pay $28? And I still think it goes back to the, to the idea that, you know, we all, like, belong to the ANA because of the camaraderie probably more than anything else, and everybody, you know, uh, you know, feel like you belong to something you've always wanted to belong to. But the, for an average collector just walking on this board floor, or, or any board floor, you know, they look at it as a 20, spending $28 or $48, you know, for whatever it is. And um, it's, you know, I think retention is a big one because we have to show value of membership. Because somebody just not going to join the ANA because, you, you know, you know, we give them, you know, you meet them and they like you and they might, they might join, you might be able to, you might be able to twist around the first time, but you're not going to keep them. So retention is a giant issue. Anyone else? Yeah, I just wanted to. Oh, Governor Atkins, I'm sorry, forgive me, I didn't see you. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I'd like to go on record as seconding this motion for, for Jeff. I think it's a, a really important thing that we do marketing and we, we get out there. Uh, Jeff and I have actually worked on some initiatives with the Mint and eBay and some other organizations that, because of the fact that they are large organizations that have a lot of people involved with them, and that's a way, great way to re do recruiting. I'd like to thank John and Nancy Wilson for all their hard work because they're probably two individuals that spend a lot of time and effort uh, recruiting members for the ANA and really, really appreciate that. One thing I am a, a bit embarrassed about is the fact that we have 
a table in the back of the bus, so to speak. We have a table in the back of the room instead of having it right out front in the lobby where John and Nancy can meet with potential uh, new members and try to sign them up. So I think our, you know, we do, we are lacking in some of those efforts and I'd like to see us uh, take that marketing effort and, and rebuild it. Thank you. Any other board? Now normally this would be a presidential, to set up, president sets up a committee. Being as we're at a transition point, I wanted to get this going now so that Governor, <clears throat> Vice President Garrett, possible President Garrett would be able to get this program started now and carry it into the new administration with ideas. This forum here was to generate ideas. For those of you that are visiting us over the webcam at our headquarters area, please get in contact. You can find Vice President Garrett's address, garrett at money.org on our website. He looks for ideas, not criticism, suggestions. Program. I'm okay with criticism. Everybody can <coughs> criticize. I'm but it's coming up, I'm done. well, we know that. <laughs> but this was the idea here. So I put it into the fact that it is a motion. Normally it's presidential, but here I want, if this is one of the main focuses that the new administration wants to do, we need to get it up and running now so that it can take off after Chicago. So at this point, I have a motion by Vice President Garrett, second by Governor Atkins to form a marketing committee consisting of staff, board, outside consultants to explore new ways to expand membership in the ANA. Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? Motion is carried 8-0-1. Mr. Garrett, <coughs> take your horse racing out and let's go. I'm on it. <laughs> <coughs> Next up, item number is seven, because there's, there's different than ours. Is it still seven? I think it was like I have, a, I have, a, I have yeah, I put, over here, our membership director, sure, I did not see, Carrie, you're hiding, I'm sorry. Hmm. Would you, do you want to, <coughs> this is Carrie Hardy, he's our current membership <coughs> department director for the ANA. <coughs> I'm sorry, Carrie, you got to wave at me, throw things at me, I'm used to that. You have a minute and a half. No. Oh. Which one are we? Which one's up first? I don't know. Uh, life, member. life membership. We're talking about the life. We're looking about this is number seven. Life membership. We're looking at the eligibility and changes. Right. Uh, the trend with our members after two years of membership, they're coming to us and they're wanting to convert with, for for life membership. We're getting a few want to uh, just sign up um, initially as life membership, but I understand we want to see if they are ethically. Uh, citizens, members, I believe that was the origin of giving the three years. I think more to a two-year term would be better for our members. Um, we would retain, not really retain, but we'd have them for life after two years. After three years, they sort of, they have to wait a long time and they sort of forget about it. So what we've been doing in the membership department is saying, well, why don't you just do your two-year renewal and then at three years when you know for renewal to qualify. But we're hoping that they remember in two years to do it. So I think at that two-year trend, if we have them sign up for life membership, we'll have a member for life, it'll keep our numbers. So you're proposing that we make a change to Article 1 under membership, Section 3 under life memberships, which now currently reads, and you have it on your agenda, <coughs> next to the last line there, currently <coughs> it reads, to for three consecutive years or more shall be eligible for life membership. What you're asking us to consider is modifying that three to the two, two year. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Discussion from the board. Is it? Um, Go ahead. You know, I, I really Vice wasn't aware of this, uh, of the three year uh, thing. I guess I, I probably, I've been a life member for a long, a life, I guess. We don't look at it. But it's, yeah. uh, I got life. Is, is it? Uh, I, you know, I, I kind of go back to the logic. So for it was three years, the idea is like is somebody who was like a low character would try to be a life member, and right. that was a bad thing. So this would initially, like when you joined, there was there was never a requirement. I think what came four years ago, this was put yeah. in place. Or you could just sign up for life membership today. Yeah, so, but so this was, was put in place to, to sort of change from zero to two thousand eleven. The new bylaws were from zero to three. And then we've had a lot of our national volunteers say they've had to reject people from wanting life memberships. 
Yeah, there have um, been inju- have there been inju- have there been cases where where you know people you know so that have been uh, you know, away. Well, no, but when it was zero, that that caused issues. No, because no, you're, you're, and you're required to abide by the member code of ethics from zero years, one yeah. years, 20 years. So it really is. I guess I'm getting back to the logic. I don't understand why it's not zero instead of, you know. I agree Actually, with zero personally, but I felt we would agree. to yeah. sort of go, well, make it easier. <laughs> we, we've got a process in place, even if we find that somebody is of low character or whatever. They're, regardless of whether they're a regular or a life member, there's a process in place for dealing Expulsion with Expulsion or... Yes. What, what would it take for us to do a zero today if we you so... You can do it today. Age, yeah. Mr. Parliamentarian. Yeah. You also have to change it in the associate and in the YN. Do we want to include YNs? And I think that was one of the concerns with people signing up six-month-old children for life membership. So that's... A well, what's the difference between a six-month-old and a three-year-old? No, no, I'm just Probably saying. But that was... Six months, three years. Yeah, tell me it's not like you're two and a half years. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just letting you know. Get an F on your report card. It could be trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you I don't see the downside though. So I mean, what's the? No, but I'm just saying. Do you realize that the that the current YN member rules require you to be at least five years old to join? Right. And I, and I believe that's coming up. We're just. Right. One right. Issue change no, I'm just, I'm just stating that that, yeah. you, 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 the days of, of former ANA off, officers signing up their grandkids at birth right. is not possible. Right. right. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> it's minimum five. Well, I personally don't see why. And like, I, I don't like. To, I hate to make. If it's a huge decision, maybe we, it needs to be thought out. But I, I would support uh, the. The zero, so I, don't, I, I don't support zero. This. I think most people would yeah. support, I, I support mo- taking zero. it back to we, where it we've was. Had, since this got passed, we've had to turn down so many people that wanted to be like members. Right. Our it's national Ill- volunteers illogical. had to as well. It gets very complicated managing the phone calls because they want to be a life member, and then we have to say, well, no, you have to join for three years. So um, the, um, the executive director and the membership director and <clears> the membership team and our national volunteers agree that it should not have a, a Let's fix it. minimum. This was just a start to get the discussion going. The two years is not, we don't have to vote on it. We can substitute anything in the motion. But well, what, who, who what does some of the audience think? Just yeah, quickly, who, who two is years, for, three years, zero? Zero, zero show of hands. Zero. Zero. Yeah, how about zero, show of hands? Please help us for those here. <laughs> okay, without a give you. One year? <laughs> two years? Forever? No. <laughs> I try everything. It was after life memberships, too. About. So it, it seems to be even here we've got about 20 or 25 in the audience. <coughs> this will give us some thought here as we discuss this. So it looks like the board, I'm going to speak for all, I don't see any objections, that zero might be better than the two being proposed. And I see membership has no objection. Mm-hmm. Our executive director has no objection. don't think there's any legal issues. Is there any that's wheeling? Okay. So we're safe that way. So let's, where's that, where's the motion on that? Well, there's three different sections to it. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm just going to tackle one section at a time. Do we need to rewrite it and I take it up it, in yeah, April? I think, okay, I think re- the wording is Let's rewrite at the end. Okay, let's then go on. We're looking at that first section. Now the second one dealing with Article 1, Section 3, under life members. The last line there, again, has the word two consecutive years. Oh, although you have to remove the whole I, last line. Have to move the, yeah. I, I do have a point, potential point okay, of order. I, wanna, I was, I was just line. looking through the bylaws, and any proposed bylaw amendment must be submitted to the Board of Governors in writing for review and comment at least 14 days prior to any This was submitted to us. But if we're changing the motion, does that? No. Okay. Not to, because we're I just, just changing make sure. what the his, I just gave Kenny <coughs> a task to give us a start, whether it's two years, one year. I take want, steps. We can certainly, as a board, <laughs> adjust that. That's our privilege. I just don't want somebody coming back saying that doesn't. That's yeah. not correct. Deals yeah. with voting privileges. Voting privileges. Changes. Yeah. Of, Look where you are. No, actually, it's uh, the. That's okay. The poor, this this is uh, is not related to the voting. Right. Portion. This is just so saying. It ties walking. back into we have to this. The parallel with it, but that's right. Thank you, Governor Lyon. So we need to sit down and go through this because there's a few sentences that right. actually need to be completely deleted. Totally mm-hmm. So I wonder if. Um, I wonder if we should just wait till April and ado- well, adopt it after we, we get, get it. If we get these zeros in, we can delete those sentences. Carrie can come back with it at our April 15th meeting. You can make a motion to accept the zero um, thing and, and modify the bylaws to read so that it 
and in April approve the bylaws. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and the wording will be approved in okay, the Okay, I'm going to go through each section. Still, we'll do that at the end. I want to make sure that when we do each little one, because there's three separate ones here, that we, if we're all in agreement with zero, we can certainly do that. So we'll go on, we'll assume here that in that section, that two consecutive years in that last sentence will be changed to zero. The third item is Article 1, Section 4, under Young Numismatists. Under C, Membership, membership as a YN shall be considered in computing the two-year membership. Am I hearing that the board is comfortable all but with changing that to zero? That's so are, so are, these yeah, things yeah, need I'm, to be I'm, deleted. You don't change well, to I zero. Change, I mean, just... I'm, I'm, well, change it to zero, yeah. They're well, saying you'll well, we'll delete it, but we'll I'm just looking it. at yeah. striking it. But yeah. that would make it zero. Yeah, yeah the, the, the requirement should just be taken that. out altogether. Right. Yes. Okay, strike. There's no requirement. No requirement. Now you see how a board works and builds things. It's complicated. So we gotta, I, just, I want to make sure before we do it, and the last change will be in Article 1, Section 5, under Associate Members. Number D, membership as an associate member shall be considered in computing the two-year membership requirement for life. Will make the appropriate change there from what the board is telling me. Okay. You've heard the board's request. Would you make the changes, get them back to us so that we can look at them before our April 15th meeting, at least by April 1st, if you can do that? Absolutely. Can you table the current motion until April 15th teleconference meeting. Okay. Thank you for your input. Thank you, audience, for your input as well. Thank you, board. <coughs> Carrie, you're going to have to get it. We've got a separate one under associate membership. Yes. You want to see Carrie? We keep you standing a lot. No, it's <laughs> no, he's fine. No, you're all right? Standing, I'm sure. used to standing up and down. <laughs> yes, the, the associate membership right now includes son and daughter. Um, I'd like to remove son and daughter because there really is no age restriction on that. You could be 40 at home and have an associate membership under a parent. So leave associate as spouse or unmarried partner living at the same address, shared address, and have a son or daughter who may be uh, of age to have their own membership, 18 or older, or younger than 18 and have their own YN membership. It's just a little cleaner. And as I said, I, I just have an issue with someone who may be 40 and have an associate membership under their parent at living at home, you know. <laughs> exactly. There's a lot of that. <laughs> one, one question yeah, I have is ahead, how, how, how would that affect, how would this affect any, so say, you know, say Walt has a 30-year-old son or daughter, currently who's an associate member. Are they going to be forced to become a regular member upon expiration of their current membership, or are they grandfathered in? We would do that when they ex when they're up for renewal. Right. We'd put them at the correct level. <coughs> There's not that many. Yeah. Okay. Any other board questions on this particular issue? Is there any objection from the board? There's a question. Yes, Governor Ross. There's a question. On the board. Well, I want to. I need the board first oh, before okay. I can open the membership. I didn't mean to solve. That's okay. I did. Good morning, Gary. Good morning. This associate member, they have all the rights and privileges and everything. That is correct. Okay. The only, uh, the associate members don't receive a printed copy of the numismatist. They get the digital edition only. That's the biggest difference. All right. Mr. DiPolito, did you have something? Seeing yeah, no other I mean, board. Stick to the topic, please. It does say associate members can be anyone who's an associate member now or, so that automatically grandfathers anybody who is now. Associate members shall be, those individuals now associate members in good standing, <coughs> those persons here after admitted, and uh, if you don't change that, you're grandfathering. Just as a question, do we... want to do, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I didn't get a sense do, for so, so, sorry to jump in, but now, now that we have our mm -hmm. electronic membership where you don't get the numismatist, is there really a need for associate membership in our present world? We, we do have quite a few associates. I think we have about four or 500 of them. Um, 
a lot of them are wives of dealers who come to the shows or um, members bring their wives to the shows. And what's the price of associate membership as opposed to the basic membership? It's like $14. So it is, it is actually cheaper, although it equals the same thing. <laughs> My wife is <laughs> It sounds like it's just a statistical thing. But yeah, yeah again, it only affects sons and daughters, you remember. I think that's something we need to really keep focused on. Right. This affects only the sons and daughters. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's currently in there with the adults. The sons and daughters is what we're trying to. And we do have, like, the couple John signed up to, for two years yesterday. Um, the wife actually wanted to be the real mem full member, and the husband was the associate, but they were a team together. So, but you know, the it's a little perk for a couple. being taken out of this particular. The sons and daughters are being removed right. from this part. So yeah. that wouldn't change for the adults. It's the sons and daughters, daughters right. that we're trying to take out of this job. Right. <laughs> so it gives them that good, you know, that they'll be YNs and they'll have their own. Yeah, group. that's cool. And, and what's the price of YN membership as opposed to associate 14. membership? It's 14. It's the same. The, yeah. It's, it's always 14 been the same. and 26. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So it, it really doesn't matter for the youngsters. No, no. It's more of a cleanup, like I said. One thing is, when they, make it when do the they right thing. become of age, then they'll have to be a full member. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah. is it, you said the associates could be age 30, 40? Now. 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 It, your, your son could be an associate. Under, uh, under the current bylaws, mm -hmm. your son, it provided he lived at the same address as you, could be an associate member. How about a different address? No. That no. Totally oh. different. So basically, yeah, this, this is changing it so that uh, that <laughs> adult children living at Anna can't be associate members would have to be full members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So again, we're just striking <laughs> from the current. And the reason we have to do this publicly is the membership has to have an input with anything that has to do with the bylaw changes. So for those of you who might ask, why are we doing this here? This is necessary. We could do it in executive session and just mandate it. But our charter says we can't do that. So we have to air it here public being involved. So that's the purpose of it. So is there any question here? We're going to, we would be striking the sons and daughters from that particular section by your associate members. Any question? So I'm looking for... Could a YN have a spouse or domestic partner? Mm -hmm. I'm yes, looking for... Yes, well, yeah, could. if they're married at 17. Yeah, okay. Arranged marriages. Yeah, Arranged marriages, that, that would be good. Possible. Yeah. Then answer all the board questions before we look. Every combination has been okay, that's good. It's a never ending yeah, cycle. Back focus a little bit here. So we're looking here to we're looking for a maker of the motion. Governor Swindley. You're going to have to add to strike now associate members. Is that uh, where we are? This is where you at? Yeah, this well, we, we strike to, now associate Jesus. members in addition. Yeah. Okay. Before I take the motion, we're going to be striking, Kim reminded me, under Section 5, also as it reads currently, associate members shall be those individuals, now associate members. We're also going to strike the language here of now associate members as well as the two words, son, and daughter later on in that. Yeah, that, that well, first paragraph, that first sentence just needs to go completely. All of it. All right, we can. We it, just, it just says any individual who is a spouse or domestic partner, a regular member, YM member, or life member in good standing. Oh, we're going back up above that where it says. No, I know. That's yeah, we don't, need that. we don't need that. You can strike that whole section if you want. Right. I, well, there needs to be something like associate members shall be um, those um, admitted as such matter as here and, here and after step four. It makes it mirror the other sections. Yeah. I, I guess we would, we would put people to clean that up before we officially adopt it, right? Or are we doing it right now? Well, I want to see if we were going to adopt it here. We still need some cleanup. I, I would just prefer to have these things crystal clean and set out before me in writing before... Gary, we'll Before also voting. ask you, we'll task you with this, clean it up, get it back to us, and we'll readdress it at the April 15th meeting. I will table this for further action okay. at that time. Okay, so that'll help you with that. 
next. All right, thank you. Thank you, Kerry. We're moving on to item number nine on the agenda. And this was left over from the board discussions we had in October of 2013. We, at that time, we're looking at consideration. This is only a discussion consideration. We're again looking for members input here about the possibility of changing the current election structure or timing of elections terms of the Board of Governors. I believe the board received all the copies from Doug Andrews from October of 2013 when this was brought up and tabled at that particular time. So being as we're in a cycle, it won't affect the cycle currently. Can I ask a couple questions? Yeah, question? I'm gonna, I'm, oh. go ahead. Okay. No, I was, I don't, I was wondering what the discussion is. Is it about extending terms or adding terms? If you looked at the supplemental material that was supplied by Doug Dan, we tasked him back in 2013, give us some options. What could we consider as a board? Uh, staggered terms, three-year terms, a two-year term, six-year term. So I guess there's no clear proposal here, right? There's no so clear proposal. He, he goes this was through. To generate discussion ideas for us. That yeah. We have requested. I mean, in board. terms in terms of my opinion, I I do think if we were to to revamp something, it might be a neat idea to have governors with four-year terms, staggered terms and we could keep the president and VP as two-year terms, and that would fit in with the, you know, the, the four years each and every other way. We'd have to increase the term limit by a little bit. I, I don't know if it would be 12 years or what it would be in order to accommodate that. Um, and that would need to be worked out into a real proposal. But I think that something like that would be very reasonable to ensure continuity on the board and yet not crazily shake things up. I think um, both Vice President and Gary and I was surprised too. And I, at that time, we're looking at that, how we can, maybe can we tweak this system? We've looked at over the years. We've had, what, drawings out of a hat, and districts we set up for governors, and various programs that didn't work. We're yeah. trying to look for something to make us more, the continuity needs to be there, Governor Ryan. Yeah, so and this I. This was something we're discussing, but I thought it would be helpful to get the membership's input. Same for those that are visiting and viewing this online. If they have some thoughts, send them in, not criticism thoughts, things that we can work with. Yeah, and I and I think, I, I don't really like the regional seats. I think the seats should be elected at large and just, you know, staggered terms for four years so we're not always running for re-election with the two-year thing. But, you know, certainly I'm, I'm open to discussion on this subject and I think it's an interesting subject. I just, um, and maybe I should put together a clear proposal. Well, um, but yeah, I, I would like to see a clear proposal for us to actually work on and, um, yeah. The idea is to get ideas to draft that proposal, and the member and the uh, bylaws and ethics committee is voting for that because we're discussing it here. Excellent. Any board members wish to discuss before I ask for audience input? Uh, I'd like to. Vice talk. President. You know, I uh, when we had this call before, I remember you know, uh, questioning it. I I don't think it's really our system is broken. I you know you right now you have. I think what you're, you're eligible, is it five two-year terms you can serve? Yes, 10-year maximum. You can do 10, 10 years. You know, to me, uh, I think that is continuity. I think 10 years is pretty pretty continuous. So, um, in and if you're in, for continuity basis, in my experience, um, most of the uh, people who are, uh, you know, been on the, or they're on the board, they, uh, they've been, been reelected. So, it's not, if, if they think there's a problem that comes up, then it, you know, you know, if there was an issue, I think one time with the whole board was there was a big problem and people did get uh, 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 removed from office. So, I don't, I don't really think our system is broken. I, I see one thing that I think could be fixed is, is that um, you know a person like you, for instance, you may serve on this board for a while, and then 20 years from now, you know you're retired, and you want to get back on the board, and you'd be handcuffed by the 10-year maximum yeah. thing. So, I have an, I think that should, that should maybe be considered, but. Um, uh, you know, I, th I think I think ten years of service is uh, is, is continuity that um, that can be broken by, you know, the organization becomes broken. So I, I don't I don't see it, I don't see it needs to be fixed, but that's my opinion. So you think it's perfect, and you would just maybe increase the term limit a little? 
I would think maybe that if I had to like just I thought about it some I thought maybe what you could do is like if after ten years you could do, do another two two terms or something like that or mm -hmm. you know some sort of you know like for instance you would be a good example of a yeah. person who served a couple of terms you know maybe twenty five years now when you're uh, you know retired and, and want to spend more time on it you you would be handcuffed by no, uh, yeah. you know, continuity because you you would serve I think that's a, a flaw in the in the system we have now but in my opinion ten ten years of service is um, you know that's pretty good, and, and you know, I think we have a good election. We have a vibrant elections, and um, it's uh, there's there always there's a natural turnover, and I think it's uh, I don't see it broken. It needs to be fixed. But that's my opinion. Fair enough. And two years gives us a chance also every election to get new blood involved too. Yeah, well, so there is a natural. We have a natural turnover. We have a natural they're, turnover. They're setting a base for the future for yeah. the board. <coughs> we have a natural turnover. Well. It seems to be working, and, and as anybody that's on this board can tell you, and you know Tom and I were talking about it yesterday was his first meeting. It's it takes a while to get you know to get your feet wet and, and to understand it, but it's uh, you know I don't know it's uh, I don't know, I don't I don't well, see a big problem with it. I think Governor Atkins also outlined it in his program yesterday. Of what we had to be, you got did you bring your 12, 15 point list? You know, consultant. There's a lot. You know, it. There's a <laughs> lot that people don't realize what this job entails now. The dynamics of the board, the hobby have changed. We have to be everything from a strategist, is that your word? I don't want to miss clear. Strategery. Strategery, I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. I'll, I'll learn it eventually. But everything that we are involved, but this board knows, and I've pushed them to the limit and beyond, we can't meet two or three times a year. We have to tackle issues, problems, or needs on a monthly basis. And our staff challenged the board back in 2013 with this task. I know some of you have said, oh, why does Walt keep calling me? We have two or three a month. But we're heading issues, big issues, and getting them resolved. So it's more helpful for that way. But if, if you'd listen to, you know, I think it's on tape. I think it was tape, was it, the, the forum yesterday? The, the things that you have to be to be on this board. It's not just, I want this because I'm so-and-so. This is a working 24-hour-a-day job. And even for a president, I wouldn't go more than two years anyway. I don't know. <laughs> Jeff, might have, Jeff, might, Jeff might have a different thought or, want, or someone else down the line. It, 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 it requires a lot of commitment. I mean, more, I look at it in the past 10, 15, 20 years back as more of a ceremonial. We have serious issues facing the hobby, not just the ANA, but everything out there. <clears throat> We've been successfully tackling it. So I do apologize for pushing you guys to the limit and beyond with meetings, but we have handled more than any other board, in my opinion, substantive-wise. We've really made some tremendous differences. Right there. And with that, I'm going to open it to the audience, unless anybody else. Did you have something to Gary, interact Gary, with? Gary, yes. I, I have my list if you want me to go through yes, it. Yes, would you I, go? I, no, I thought it was an excellent <laughs> point so that people really That's realize in our audience <coughs> watching, our membership knows what's all involved. Oh, they're on the annual board to get free meals, limousines, you know, all this stuff. Yeah, here is yeah. I got my Taj Mahal over at the Motel 6. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I guess my opinion about uh, being on the board is that, you know, looking at perhaps a three-year, I say my, my opinion about, um, let me take this thing out of here, actually. <laughs> Um, my opinion on uh, on board membership, I, I think that you know by expanding it to say maybe three years, I think it does provide a little more continuity. Um, and you know, by the time we're basically uh, on a roll here and we're trying to get some things accomplished, all of a sudden there's an election coming up. It's an expensive proposition for the A and A to conduct an election. And so, um, if we if we've got good mem good people on the board, good members on our board, then. Um, why not keep them is my opinion, I guess. So, but uh, in reviewing all the various things that you really need to be involved in on our board, there's a lot of different issues that come up and some of those are strategic planning, finances and accounting, rules of order and bylaws, business management, government relations, tax issues, employment law and relations, collector relations, dealer relations, club relations, strategic partner relations, vendor relations, convention planning, museum operation, education outreach, security assessment, technology, and probably the most important thing is continuing to provide value to our members. So all of those things are um, important to uh, you know the process and, and all of those things are, are things we consider 
all the time. So um, there, it's a it's a big job, and and uh, you know I applaud anybody that's willing to take on the responsibility and and become a, a member of our board or an officer. So thank you. Governor Ross, I wanted to get the chime in what Scott was saying. I think it's important. Uh, sometimes you may have to take a leave of absence or sabbatical or do something different and come back to the board. I'm thinking that some of the people who are involved in numismatics are involved in numismatics for life, and they have an opportunity to do something else and come back and see a different review and a different picture of what's going on in a different time frame. So that's important to maybe leave the board, do some things, and come back and still jump right in with your feet running. You know, I open it to the audience. I would like us to just a second, John. Go ahead and get, John, I have to get this part over before I can oh, get to your resume. Oh, okay. Because I know you got the resolutions. I'm holding sure. that. Okay, sorry, two different things. I apologize, but please address the issues with you know the positive stuff that you need <laughs> before I can go. John, three minutes. Oh, my knees are going. I don't know. You wasted two minutes. One already. thing, one thing that uh, President Board, esteemed uh, officers, one thing uh, Mr. Adkins forgot to mention is uh, on his uh, list of uh, things that a board member does is. It doesn't have anything under on fundraising, nothing. You gotta add that to your okay. list for I sure. Will add that. Yeah. Another thing on membership. I don't like the three year terms. I like the two year terms. I like every two years you have an election and everybody runs for the election. If you change it to a three year term, that ends up with maybe, would they go off at nine years? Ken Hallenbach could voted himself off the board some years back when he, when he put a motion on a floor, you can only serve 10 years. There's a lot of governors like myself that serve 10 years. If you change it to add an additional four years, I can run for the board again. Do I want to run for the board? Nah, I don't want to run for the board. You know, I served on a board, you know, and I, I had enough term. But I think, though, that the, it's not, it definitely isn't broke, so don't mess around with it. But the thing is, don't add more years. President Hallenbach, past President Hallenbach. He went off the board for several years, and he came back, run for VP, run for president. You, you do that yourself. You run for, if you want to run for VP or president, serve three terms for two years, run for VP, run for president. And that's the way that's done. And the thing is, uh, if you change it, you might have, like in the past, you have, I won't mention any name, people served uh, eight years on a board, ten years on a board. They lived on a board and other things, and I won't go there. But the thing is, the thing is, uh, uh, if you change it, add a couple more years, like Dr. Scott said, you know, I can come back, I can run again. Nancy still has one term left that she wants to run. But I'm not getting any younger, you know, and uh, uh, we love the a and and I hope you all love the a and and the thing is, uh, uh, if nothing's wrong with it, don't change it. Thank you. Clipper, did you, Mr. Mister, did you wish to? <coughs> I saw. No. Okay. <laughs> Do you wish to come back on the board? I mean, that's. <laughs> I saw you doing something. Oh, I'll get your attention, past president. All right. Uh, I, I think. Um, Please tell us your name because. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Steve DiPolito. I, I think Jeff's uh, made an interesting point that you know maybe somebody would serve six years, then um, finish their career and retire. Uh, and then they'd be hamstrung that it could only serve four. And I'd say maybe a provision could be added that for every 10 years you spend off the board after your first stretch, you get two years back. Um, as long as it, you know, because, uh, what, yeah, we don't want people living on the board, uh, but if they can go out and live in the real world and come back again, um, that, that would uh, fix any tendency to feel like you're, God or King or something like that, um, that sometimes people in elected office get. Uh, so, you know, that might not be such a bad idea as long as it's done in a certain way where you get some of your time back at the longer you've been off the board. Um, other than that, I don't see, perceive a whole lot of breakage. Um, so. Let me one comment. Yes, Mr. Vice President. Um, I also, I just want to make a comment uh, about, about this just for historical perspective uh, for me because I, I like to, uh, I always like to lean on people who I know have been around for a long, long time. Uh, Dave Bowers and I communicate a lot because we do different projects together and um, he's weighed on, the, on this subject uh, with me a lot and he thinks there should be no term limits and just like Congress and uh, uh, 
you know, that you can, you know, he thinks that it was, the, the rules were changed a long time ago of, um, to, because the people were just like, you know, abusing, uh, I guess abusing, but he doesn't think that's a problem and that we should not have it. I disagree with him, but I just want to give us perspective that there is, a, this is an issue that there's going to be a lot of different opinions about, and I respect Dave Bowers in every way possible, but I disagree with him on this issue. So I just want to give a, uh, just you know, feedback so somebody you know with a lot of wisdom, wisdom has an, you know that's his opinion on it. Three minutes. Please announce yourself. Uh, Kurt Bellman is my name. Uh, I I also don't see much that's broken here, but that might be a temporary situation. We now have a healthy, respectable number of candidates running for board of governor in this cycle. Uh, so that speaks to the fact that we might not have a, pr a problem presently, but we could have a problem later on, a problem either attracting enough candidates, I mean, we don't have, we, won't, we don't want to be in a situation if this hobby continues to contract uh, where we have a problem getting people to, to serve the association. <coughs> I think we should be ready if that, start, if that starts to happen to uh, make the prohibition against ten, uh, more than 10 years of continuous service and then allow people to go off and come back. But more than that, I don't think really needs to be touched right now. And, and you know, to add a little bit there too, the board, when these new bylaws came into play, they did add another component where <coughs> the past, media past president did serve ex officio, had a voice, but they cannot be a vote per you know, federal charter, but that component was put in there for additional continuity too. So there's a sense there's a person that can be there for up to 12 years. Someone else? Yes, sir. Please announce yourself. Carol Katzman. I'm getting kind of involved in this, and this is kind of exciting. I do policies and procedures for a couple of groups as well as for your a a group too of Doug Andrews. I think if it's not broke from the standpoint of the true to your term limit, maybe you don't need to address that. I do think uh, Vice President Gary makes a great point about after your 10 years, if there's X amount of time gone by, and I think 10 years makes a reasonable number, they should be able to come back again because you've had a chance for 10 years of new blood to get into here. The hard part would be, what do you do for someone who goes off for six years, so they decide they need other things to do, family, whatever, and they want to come back? Do we limit them to four years and they got to wait 10 years to go for 10 years or not? Perhaps the, the logical thing to do, if they were gone for six years, they need to wait six years, and they can start court another 10 years, maybe the way to balance it out so they've taken the same amount of time off. But I do believe there should be a way down the line, whether it's 10 years, 15 years, 12 years, to do something like that because maybe they have a different perspective and you've had a chance to get new blood in there. So I think that's a great thing to consider. <coughs> speaker if not this was the idea for you to for you to be able to provide us with some input we had a 15 minute discussion here and again you know for those that are online and are viewing us through our modern technology certainly if you have some thoughts please share them with the board we, we're here to listen and I, I'll, I'll speak for vice president garrett as the presidential nominee i'm sure that he would like to help and that'll help us move forward so i appreciate you taking the time to share on this issue in the discussion, and with that, we'll move along. So I need to, we need to be moving on here as well. Item number ten. When I became president some 19 months ago, this board allowed me the privilege of offering the excitement as to what it's like, as to what you all, as members here, and those that are viewing here in our audience, was like to give a YN an opportunity to have sit on the board as an intern. Three individuals have already fulfilled that role. Most have been very active in board discussions in anything dealing with the open session. And our current individual was not able to be here, Hannah Powell. And I want to thank and we have a certificate of accomplishment for Hannah for participating as the YN intern on the board. She has all the rights to discuss everything except vote. And some of the YNs provide us a whole different perspective from their thing, because some of us on the board are a little over 39, so we need a little extra insight from a different group. But we want to thank Hannah for her service <coughs> and for my last.
last appointee, I'm asking the board to consider Sam Ernst, a young man, as our youth intern, serving from March 7th through August 8th, 2018. Is there a maker for the motion? So moved. Vice Second. Pres Vice President Atkins. Second. Vice President Atkins. <laughs> yes. Governor Atkins. Governor Mulvaney. Sam could not be here. He has college exams. Hmm. But he and his dad, if you haven't seen them, they're both from the Omaha, Nebraska coin flip. And he and his dad had what they call the numismobile. It's a coin with a car with coins all over it. And they travel throughout the Midwest. And just having the coins there attracts people. Guess what he's got inside? <coughs> Membership applications for the Nebraska Numismatic Association. Information about the ANA. Information about the Omaha Coin Club. But this car attracts people all ages. And he drives it hundreds of miles to conventions throughout the Midwest. And it's fun to see this. They entered it in a car rally recently, and they won first place. So it's exciting. But this is this is what Sam is, and Sam had a great input into, we talked about a strategic plan. He was one of three YNs that I sat at summer seminar with and helped tweak our new strategic plan, which is on the website. He was one of those along with Hannah and a couple of others. They just, they were great to have him. So I want to speak on their behalf as to the, the value of this, and I hope that our nominee for president might consider using this role again to this way involve our YNs because they have a tremendous social network and they talk about what it's like and they, they just share the excitement. You know, it's, it's frustrating. They know what we're going through. They know what you the membership are going through. Anyway, I have a motion and a second. Are there any discussions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried, eight to zero, one. The only, we have no written reports. The only oral report you received was from the Education Committee. Thank you, Mr. Gillis, for sharing that. And in a sense, I guess Kerry Hardy shared a little bit from the Membership Committee as well during his time. And now what you've all been waiting for, Legal Counsel Holly Whelan. Is there any good news that we can report to our members? There is great news. Would you please share it? I am happy to confirm that we are litigation free. We have resolved all pending litigation against the ANA and uh, hope that you all will be seeing a lot less of me. I'm <laughs> sure staff will um, enjoy a little break from interacting with me. So. And we found a job for you delivering us coffee, so we've got you set up for your next <laughs> job beyond <laughs> being legal counsel. Are you going to cut my pay? <coughs> well, I guess I'll have to pay you. Well, the, look, I helped you to do budget. I couldn't get two more zeros for my pay. I've got 19 right. zeros already. Other, uh, than, other than that, there's no other legal matters to report. Any questions? I don't think there'd be any questions. Really. <laughs> Ancient history is great, isn't it? And now we can focus, and that leaves the new administration coming in with a lot of free time to really zero in on some of the needs, membership, fundraising. Because <clears throat> as, as Governor Atkins pointed out, we're doing all these other 19 or 20 items in addition to try and keep it together. Now it's my pleasure to introduce, for those who may not know, our executive director, Kim Kick. You've got some cool things you want to share with us? Yes, I do. Uh, please go for it. Welcome, everybody. Is this on? Okay. Yep. All right. Just going to give you a few highlights. Um, recently, the ANA is honored to receive on permanent loan from ANA member Barry Schuler a complete set of Clark Gruber and Company Colorado Territorial Gold Coins. The set is made up of eight coins, two and a half, five, ten, and twenty from 1860 to 1861. The coins will become part of the ANA collection as a bequest upon Mr. Schuller's passing. This is a great addition to the ANA collection. We previously had only two lesser examples of the Clark Gruber coins in the collection, allowing us to highlight an important part of Colorado numismatic history in a comprehensive way. The coins are conservatively estimated at 182,000, and we plan to develop an exhibit in the very near future. 
And we do appreciate those that remember us in their estate planning and in their bequests. And we'll be reaching out and developing a long-term giving plan um, for the association. Colorado Wyoming Numismatic Association donation. The Colorado Wyoming Numismatic Association ceased operation as of June 18th, but they decided to donate all its liquidated funds to the ANA. They've earmarked them for the ANA Adult Summer Seminar Scholarship Program. The board uh, approved the receipt in an open session on October 14th, honoring the provision to award two scholarships to eligible residents of Colorado and Wyoming at their <coughs> wishes. The fund is now fully endowed with a total 19,200 received in February. <coughs> um, the estate of Steve Roden, a bequest from the estate of Steve Roden was approved by the board in open session at 2014 World's <coughs> Fair of Money with an estimated value of 48 to 60,000. The ANA is honored by Mr. Roden's generous gift, which came in at the total of 60,000. On um, the defined benefit plan, employee pension, that was a big move the association had to make to benefit uh, the association. Uh, the defined benefit plan termination was complete at the end of January. Uh, there may be an additional charge for the plan year 13 and 14 as they ensure the balances in the accounts and there were still funds in the plan. <coughs> funds were transferred from uh, Oak Mart to fund the last payment amount of 566000 We made one other payment of 363000 The first estimate was around eight sixty-five, and that estimate was fairly close. So we did well in um, estimating that. Thank you, Carol. Uh, we had excess in the balance sheet liability to cover the amount and we'll recognize the excess liability as revenue in the next fiscal year. 52 current and former employees opted for distributions or rollovers. Six former employees were receiving annuity payments through the plan and four set up new annuities and two chose to roll over. That was a big undertaking and thank you Controller Schumann for managing that entire operation. Uh, and as I stated, it was a good decision for the association, and as it is turning out, it's good for the employees as well. So, uh, marketing and coaching. Um, Deborah Molizen, uh, she was an employee at the ANA when I started in the 80s for eight years, moved into marketing and consulting on her own, uh, has a wonderful resume, and she will be. Um, working with us, she's experienced with nonprofits on a very part-time basis to help us with marketing strategies and also uh, to increase membership, marketing exposure in the local community, national community, and assist with our branding. I look forward to having that type of expertise. Uh, Steve Kirkpatrick uh, is also a leadership coach. He's been working with uh, my appointed ANA leadership team. We are focusing on survey development now, and we do not have current staff that have expertise in survey development. So we're leaning on Steve to help us as he educates us. So um, several department leads have identified the need for this data and the membership to provide actionable intelligence on subjects ranging from member services to dealer satisfaction. Steve's guidance is a benefit to the ANA staff and will help us get feedback from our current members, our current dealers, our LAPS members, and those that have never been a part of the ANA. We're hoping this will help build with our marketing strategies so we can get actual answers and not make assumptions as why people stay as members and why people leave us. Um, website. Our ANA website continues to expand adding new content such as uh, archive of the ANA Money Talks podcast, the virtual display of the Money Museum's recently retired exhibit, A House Divided, Money of the Civil War. The ANA blogs regularly host fun historical items such as Throwback Thursday, photos from conventions past, as well as conversations covering a variety of collecting topics. We encourage members to participate in growing the online ANA community. ANA Legacy Series. The ANA Legacy Series is intended to celebrate the lives and contributions of our members and to preserve their knowledge. In the words of Vice President Garrett, it is a great loss for the coin community every time one of the legends of numism numismatists passes away. 
we wish we could do a better job of interviewing and recording the experiences of these greats. Filming for the ANA Legacy Series begins began here at the Portland National Money Show. We plan to record the first six interviews this year. Since we are in development stage, so we've launched this, but we are still in development stages on this program, but we didn't want to delay. Uh, our initial challenge is to acquire needed funding for travel to conduct interviews of our notable numismatists that can't come to our site locations, including summer seminar or our events. Uh, we also plan to film at future conventions and during the summer seminar and in our local community. Um, we have been uh, developing a page for the website to preserve and display virtual perpetual plaques for ANA award honorees. That way, not only would they just be on a plaque at the ANA, which not everybody gets to see, it'll be forever on our website. Uh, that's in the works now. In addition, we are going to do an advanced uh, view of our Hall of Fame. It'll be like um, walking into a museum. You'll come in, you'll see their, their photograph, then it opens to a bio, all their awards. It'll be an interactive program, and we're hoping that, too, can enshrine those individuals forever for everybody to see. Um, educational travel programs. The ANA proudly hosted the Treasure Trivia at the Fun Show in January. That was a new adventure for us, and it went very well. Uh, we're also pleased to offer the Grading Mint State Coin Seminar in conjunction with the Michigan State Numismatic Society's Spring Convention in April. And we have Brian Silliman as a volunteer instructor. We are doing outreaches to our regional and national coin shows that we can become a part of their event, uh, spreading out the talents of our educational um, assets from our facilities. Uh, we also have, as Richard mentioned, the next stop for our ANA Roadshow is the GNA in April. And the ANA will also be, le be leading their Scouts program. Uh, today we have full days of the scout programs here in Portland, both with Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. Typically it's not an all-day thing. Uh, we got great participation for these events here. And locally we'll participate in Coin Science Festival in Colorado Springs next month, demonstrating the science behind counterfeit detection. We were also fortunate that we have a graduate student at the University of Colorado, uh, Janine Prescott. She selected the ANA Education Department as the focus of a grant writing project to be submitted to the Al Pamar Foundation, a Colorado nonprofit. So we're hoping, if we don't get a grant, what we're hoping to learn is how to pursue grants in the future. And we will gain a lot of knowledge at no cost with this effort. Um, I am proud of the success of our programs, advancing education of numismatics and fueling the passion for our hobby. The following are the quality programs and educational opportunities for all ANA members to participate and enjoy. Of course, our monthly publication, The Numismatist, both in print and online, the largest circulating numismatic library in the world, of course, summer seminar, seminars and educational programs at other national and regional shows, the Money Museum at Colorado headquarters, online virtual exhibits, including our collection, the ANA Museum Showcase at our national shows and other numismatic trade shows, the ANA Numismatic Diploma Program, lesson plans for teachers, our dealer directory, club directory, and of course our conventions. Additionally, these programs are designed to appeal to our members age 22 and younger. Uh, Coins for A's is expanded, as Rod stated earlier, over 800 participants, and we foresee this growing uh, to maybe 1,500 within the next year. Summer seminar scholarship programs, ANA college scholarship program, early American coin project, ancient coin project, YN dollars, YN treasure trivia, YN auctions, the money bus, and kids zone. The, the theme of our National Coin Week this year, Building Tomorrow's Inspirations and Innovation at World's Fairs. This celebrates the history of the World's Fairs and Expositions and mankind's achievements in science, architecture, and social progress.
The 2015 event will take place April 19th through 25th and will celebrate the centennial of the 1915 Panama Pacific International Exposition in San Francisco. Our website will include several activities, both for youth and adults. We will hold an open house at the museum and um, our special thanks to Vice President Jeff Garrett and Governor Atkins for donating two 1915S Pan Pack Half Dollars as grand prizes for our member and member club activities. In closing, my personal note is, it is my pleasure to be a part of this association for 33 years. I am grateful to the ANA members, collectors, and dealers alike. The ANA board and its officers are invaluable national, regional, and local volunteers. The dedicated and hardworking staff in Colorado and countless others who support and encourage me. I appreciate the members who have stayed with the association through challenging times and those who are helping to shape the future. This is the backbone of our organization, the constant and faithful, as well as the innovative and visionary. We are very engaged in plans to move the association forward, to grow the membership, to promote the ANA to a broader audience, to encourage the excitement of numismatics. To succeed in these goals, it takes stability, consistency, and trust. These values are at the heart of our future. Let's continue working together to keep our hobby and our association strong. Thank you. Yeah. Right. As president, may I ask one other update? If you'll, if you don't, I don't, I, I care. Would you give us a status update on the digitization process, please? I think yes. That's, um, that's one of our. Um, fantastic projects we're working on. We have most of the copies submitted to the company to begin their digitization of the print works. This project initiated in 14. We um, anticipated having something for display early in 2015. We hope to have many things up by 15. The project is more intense than anticipated. Um, we've had many meetings with the company, with the firm, and it's very exciting for us. So 2015, you will be able to see the digitization indexing, but it will be a work in, prog you know, in progress, but we don't expect it to take more than 16. So that is going to be a wonderful a a benefit to members as well as a research tool to um, non-members. So we're excited. I'm You're excited. welcome. That, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we have as a board. We appreciate you being here, sharing. I'm sorry, did we have Governor okay. Ross? John Wilson, who had to leave, oh, asked right. me I, if I would read the resolutions. resolutions. My apologies. Is it a good time at this time yes. to read the resolutions? Right. May I? Get it earlier. All right. <clears throat> John kept going in and out. So. Yes, he asked me if I would. I said yes. Resolutions, Portland, Oregon. Whereas on March 5th, 7th, 2015 in Portland, Oregon, the American Numismatic Association held its National Money Show, a highly successful and outstanding event, and whereas it's fitting that those individuals and organizations that help achieve this success be recognized for their contributions and efforts, therefore, be it resolved that the host organizations, the Pacific Northwest Numismatic Association, the William Met Coin Club, and the Salem Numismatic Society be thanked for supporting this convention, and that the association extends its gratitude to host chairman Danny Bisgard, assistant host chair Scott Loos, honorary host chairs Kathy Rowe and the late Larry Rowe, and their committee members along with local and national volunteers for the valuable assistance and be it resolved that the association membership thank ANA President Walter A. Ostromecki, Jr. and the Board of Governors, appointed officers, executive director Kimberly, Kimberly Kick and the ANA staff, especially Convention Director Rhonda Shurick, Exposition Manager Sam Joseph, Convention Assistant Jennifer Cook, and Sponsorship Manager David Truesdell for their diligent and tireless work for this National Money Show, and be it resolved that all reports delivered at the convention by ANA officers, staff members, and committees be accepted with thanks, and that the Oregon Convention Center and the Doubletree Lloyd Center Hotel be thanked for their cooperation excuse me, cooperation and assistance 
and that numismatic publications be recognized for their coverage and support of this convention, and that the association thank convention sponsors and patrons for their generous financial support, and be it resolved that the association express its thanks to the official a and &E auctioneer, Stax Bowers Galleries, and the United States Mint for their participation in this convention, and be it resolved that the association express its thanks Robert Bergermond and Positive Protection Incorporation for providing convention security for collectors and dealers alike, and be it resolved that the association express its sincere thanks and gratitude to all numismatists and institutions who share their knowledge and or collections in the ANA Museum Showcase, Collectors Exhibits, Money Talks Presentation, and other educational programs, meetings, and events, and be it resolved that the association recognize that the vital support and participation of the professional numismatists who purchase tables and ser serve collectors and the public at this event and that all persons not herein recognized be thanked for their support, effort, time, and contributions without which a convention of this magnitude could not proceed with such ease and efficiency. Respectfully submitted by the ANA Resolution Committee, March 7, 2015, John and Nancy Wilson, Charles Uppitz, ANA Board Representative slash Governor Dr. Ralph Ross, and ANA Staff, Lezion Barber. Gregory. We'll add that. And add Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Governor Ross. I will need at this particular time a motion by, a second by, to accept the report of the Resolutions Committee as read. Is there a mover? So Governor moved. Governor Atkins? Second? Okay. I'll second it. Governor Mulvaney, we'll keep it on that side. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion of abstain. Motion carried, all six. Eight, zero, one. With that, I'll let the board that needs, yes, Governor Atkins. Um, I just wanted to add uh, a, uh, an important thing here that uh, we have a, a real important strategic partner with us today, Kathy McFadden from the Industry Council for Tangible Assets. And I don't know if Kathy wants to take yeah, a moment if it's be, okay. That she's up, yeah. That's oh, okay. I apologize. That's fine. I apologize. We're going to get you used to it. We're going to get you yeah. used to these things. Yeah. Kathy? Yes, please. Thank you. I'm a little short. Thank you. Kathy McFadden, Executive Director for the Industry Council for Tangible Assets. In the interest of time, I know you guys are ready to get back out there on the uh, forest floor. Um, I just want to update you on two issues that will impact you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Kim and Rhonda, who work with me almost daily on um, uh, getting me information to help support our legislative efforts. ICTA is, um, that's all our mission is, is legislative and re regulatory affairs. And they've helped me out significantly this year. We're working on some major issues. The two that are impacting you is DC. Um, Mike Jackson will be at the Baltimore show. I'm working with him um, trying to get um, sales tax exemption uh, for DC for your ANA show. And so I will be working hand in hand with him. I wanted him to come to the Baltimore show and I've asked them to actually bring a councilman who would be very supportive of the show so they can actually see uh, firsthand what goes on. The other one um, issue is the Virginia um, uh, State Association, or state that has actually uh, introduced legislation this year. Both of those uh, bills are on the governor's office for repeal or for sales tax exemptions for bullion only right now. We're going to have the governor sign one of the bills, which is very interesting that there's actually two bills um, on his desk. One to sign for the bullion um, only that that's the only thing we could get in right now was the bullion, but we're going to have him try to sign the second bill um, to, to include rare coins. The, we have a fairly good shot at this. We're, we're not sure, but we have a fairly good shot. They has till April 15th to sign both of those bills. We have, if we don't get rare coins this year, I can guarantee you David, David Feigenbaum will go back after rare coins next year. Gary Adkins has his bill in the legislature right now. Uh, we, and and uh, it's passed the House. It, he testified on the Senate on um, Tuesday, and we're hoping that that will sign. It is uh, bullion only, but maybe we can go back and get rare coins um, in the future. Uh, also, David Hendrickson in Indiana has a bill has a bill in his state, and it is rare coins, precious metals, bullion, 
and currency. It has a huge shot of getting signed. We've testified there. It passed the Senate or passed the House. It's now in the Senate. A hearing is on Tuesday. So that will be another opportunity for having hopefully three more states in the United States who have sales tax exemptions. We currently have 31. It gives a and &A more opportunities to have um, shows in more states. But Virginia, we really are working very hard to try to get your sales tax exemption there so we can maybe bring the show um, in uh, 2018 to that show. Is there any questions on that? I know I've talked fairly fast on that. Is yes, Jeff? mentioned it to me that there's some things happening in Pennsylvania that might be a problem. Yes, I will address that. Both Pennsylvania and Maryland um, have put bills in to repeal their legis uh, repeal the sales tax exemption. Maryland, I testified on that on Tuesday. Whitman is putting a full, full court press on that. We have pretty much been told by the chairman that they are going to suppress the bill and not pass it forward out of committee. Uh, Julian was very helpful in that because Julian uh, is in the, um, the district where the chairman actually is um, located, so that was really helpful. Um, Pennsylvania, the governor has put it in his ombudsman bill, and we are hoping that we can get that out before it even um, gets to the legislative process in having a bill introduced. A uh, gentleman right here is going to help us. Uh, Pan is helping us. Um, we are really putting out a full court press to get that um, taken care of. I know a and will pull, pull their show there um, if that is not not taken care of, so we are getting that. We have, to, we have a system called StateNet, which is a legislative service that we can monitor every single piece of legislation that happens in the United States. And currently, I'm, I'm looking at about 200 bills that affect our industry. So we're keeping on track of it, keeping on top of it. We need everybody's support. Jeff, do you have any other questions on the DC issue? Uh, no, I'm, I, just, I just want to state that how excited I am. I hadn't heard that it was in the works until uh, this, this show. And yeah. um, it's, uh, to me, that could be, I think that could be one of the best locations for an A&A convention that in the country. Yeah. Because it's, uh, you know, it's on the East Coast corridor and uh, it's a wonderfully family friendly. So I'm ecstatic that you've taken this effort and, and right. uh, made great progress in it and it'll be, um, as, as uh, you know, everybody that was in this board meeting the other day knows from these, these site city, these uh, site selections for cities is getting more, much more difficult. It a lot is. of cities won't have us and DC is actually would like our business. So. It would be a um, it would be a really great benefit for the ANA if you could get that done. I, right. I, I applaud your efforts and <laughs> let us know what we can do and get that uh, help right. that because that would really that, that'd be a big bailout for our organization. And and consider that DC in August is very hot and humid, but it's a great city. Yeah, well it's, and Borsvar is usually pretty only seventy, so <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. It is a very exciting city, and in August, um, the all the legislators are gone, so you don't have to worry about the political issues. So there you go. anything else, Gary? Yeah, just to maybe want to speak briefly on the Hobby Protection Act. Uh, yes, actually, the Hobby Protection Act, we were the only, we, there were two bills in Congress that was passed this year on and out of the Commerce Department, and we were one of them, and that's thanks to Jimmy Hayes, who is our lobbyist on the Hill, uh, was able to get that bill passed. The, gov the, um, the president signed that bill right before he went to Hawaii on vacation. But that really puts more teeth into our industry on counterfeiting, um, especially in what it will also especially do is help the grading services. It will help us go after people who are not only selling, um, selling counterfeits, who are bringing them in, importing it. So it really gives us teeth to go after and, and make some really progress in suing those various people. Um, so what we need help from, from the whole industry is when you start seeing counterfeiting, let us know so that we can start keeping track of it. We can start making sure that we are getting um, as much information out there as a possible to the grading services, to the, to the law enforcement agencies. This is a massive issue, and it's a huge bill that, that we were able to get passed this year. Um, we are just now in the process starting to get information on our website. How are we defining this? How are we really getting our hands around what we can do to make the impact? There's nothing as far as ICTA can do is enforcement. That is basically from your side of the table is, is somebody who needs to, if they're going to, to make a lawsuit, you have to, you know, whoever's being damaged has to make the lawsuit. But we are here to help facilitate it. Gary, do you have anything else to add to that? 
Well, I think the ANA can also be, take a, um, an active role in that because I think it's about education. Oh, massive and, about education, uh, absolutely. I, I have a coin shop, and anybody here that deals in, in coins, every week there's somebody comes in that you know bought something that's a, that's a that's, you know they, they think they got a bargain. There's a counterfeit. It's a it's a huge problem. And I think the ANA probably should uh, <coughs> look at. Uh, Providing more educational uh, opportunities to Absolutely. let people know about that because it's it's a it's something that people don't know about until it's too late. And, <coughs> and now that, like, say, at least if someone is a victim, they have a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, I guess of a legal remedy that can be sought. So I, 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 sure. that's really a great thing that you got that done because we we all need the protection. Absolutely. And Doug Davis, um, he's with the Numismatic Enforcement Law Enforcement. Um, and I'm getting his association. Correct. The crime enforcement. He has been a huge help with that, and we're working hand in hand with him on that. So that's that's going to be helpful. But it starts out very small, and one of the things that we've learned through this is that it it may be just a few coins, but there's a bigger picture of this. And once we can start tracking the little coins, it may lead us to the larger supply of this. And um, I know that you know China is also a huge. Uh, importer, as we would say, of illegal counterfeiting. And this is going to give us some major teeth to go after those, those I'd like issues. To, I'd like to also give everybody a, a, an idea why this is so important. I go to Washington, D.C. quite a bit doing things. And, and in the last two or three years, I've been uh, asked by the Secret Service to help them with, with this problem Absolutely. with counterfeits. And I've been there a few times. And they told me that the only way we're going to be able to um, deal with counterfeits is you'll never be able to stop them in China. Right. It's impossible. Um, it's a flood of them coming into the country, almost impossible to have someone at every uh, port of entry. The only way to stop it is, is pretty much like IRS um, enforcement. They're going to have to make examples of people who are right. doing, who do this kind of thing. And that's, that's so, you know, the past have been so, some sort of immunity. It's like you buy a coin, you take it around, you know, they can't sell it, you know, but if they can, the law enforcement or whoever, victims, can make examples of people, that's, and this will add teeth to it. That's really the only thing that's going to that's going to slow it up, and um, mm -hmm. that was that was told to me by the Secret Service, and that's their that's their take on it. You're absolutely Jeff correct, Jeff, and nobody was killed. So a lot of times they don't want to deal with it because you know it's they don't see it as a big crime. We have to start documentation. How much money is really coming in? Um, if it's if it's eighty thousand dollars, they really don't want to get involved in it because it, to them that's a lot of resources that they are putting out that they don't have time for. So we as an industry. I mean, we're talking everybody in this industry work together to really find out how much we're really talking about. And it's significant. Um, but here again, it's all about documentation and out about presentation. And, you know, perception is reality. If, if, if we don't, as an industry, let them know how much is out there, then, um, you know, we're, we're, we're not doing the, the work on the outline. And, and the people, a lot of the people that are hurt are the small-time investors. Are the, the you know people who are putting it um, you know away for their retirement and all this type of stuff? So those are some of the people that are really being hurt by this. And they're, and they're member dealers. A lot of coin shops around the country. It's, I mean, it's it's tricky. Like people come in with coins. They're mm -hmm. counterfeit PCGS holders, and you know the context isn't isn't correct. It's so. I mean, I've I mean I've personally seen a lot of guys lose ten thousand dollars. Lots of guys. Yeah, and they are so good now yeah. of of the counterfeiting, and it, it is amazing what. Um, what they can do, and, and it's it's really hard. So, we as an industry, ANA, PNG, um, ICTA, we all have to work together. And I think we've really started a great relationship um, with with that whole process. So, any other questions? We're we're working very hard for you. Um, literally, we're uh, working night and day. I <laughs> even and and um, I'll just touch a little bit on the Minnesota uh, registration law. I can't tell you how many hours this gentleman over here, Gary Adkins, has put in in the last eight months, or has it been 10 years? It sure feels like 10 years. But there is a committee that, uh, with ICTA that is working diligently trying to help um, alleviate some of those regulations in there. It, it may not get done this year, but I'll let you know that we are um, pretty much working nonstop on that whole issue. And that, that not only affects the dealers, but the hobbyists. And I can't tell you how many people in Minnesota who are the collectors and the hobbyists are screaming because they can't buy any more from the dealers they've been buying for for 30 years because nobody wants to register in Minnesota anymore. So Thank you. anything else? Gary, I know we could talk about this for hours and hours at nauseum, but <laughs> Thank you. anything yeah. else? Okay. You don't just talk, it's actually getting done. We do get a, a lot of get done. Cultures, as we know. Yes. So. You think? Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yes, Kurt.
Kurt Bellman again. Uh, many of you may be aware I work for the Pennsylvania General Assembly, uh, specifically for the Democratic Caucus of the House of Representatives. As I predicted in August, we have a new governor in Pennsylvania, Governor Wolf. On my last day at work before coming out here, he gave his budget address. And he mentioned some things that are of due concern to this organization. He proposed raising the sales tax from 6.0 to 6.6%, and more ominously, perhaps, to expand its base of application. <clears throat> now, of course, the devil is in the details. Will numismatic products be part of the changes he wants to make to the base of the sales tax? That question will be answered when I get home and start pouring through the spreadsheets. Uh, I've, I've made a connection with Kathy McFadden, uh, and uh, I will be trying to be helpful to her to get her before the proper legislative committees. At the same time that, that the voters of, of Pennsylvania elected a Democratic governor, it was the only statewide seat, uh, Senate or governor, that, sl that switched from Republican to Democrat in the entire country uh, in the 2014 cycle. Um, at the same time, they elected historic margins for the other party in the House and the Senate. The people for whom I work now number only 83, and three of them are under, or possibly under indictment by the time I get back. We could be down to 80 out of 203. So uh, uh, all is not lost. The, I, uh, I, will, I will put Kathy, I see she's nearby Pennsylvania. I've got to put her in front of the Finance Committee, the, which is the committee that deals with all tax uh, legislation. And we'll see to it that uh, as long as my fingerprints stay off of it and my boss doesn't hear too much about it, he doesn't, he doesn't watch, he doesn't go on money.org, uh, we'll see if we can't get these uh, sales tax uh, effects stopped. But we need to be prepared to start talking tough as an association. And that includes telling people that our summer convention is in Philadelphia in 2018 if we need to talk tough. I need to get some of the board back to their dealer tables. I need to get the scout clinic. So I will stay, and I'm sure there's a couple of other board members that will be here afterwards will be willing to talk with you. I don't know Kim's schedule if you can stay. If not, that's fine. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We appreciate it. We'll see you all in Chicago.